So I spent the last 100 weeks building mood boards. Over the last two years, I've actually stepped into a more creative art direction role. Just recently, actually landing a position at NRG as their art director. Here's what I've learned. Also, as per usual, do not forget to check out the Everything Pack. It's the first link in the description down below, where you basically get all my products, all custom made products by me on my self life page right now, literally all of them on one purchase, plus all future products for free, no matter the price, forever. First thing is first, art direction. I'm sure you know the first part where it stems from creating a visual identity to later package it and pass it on from designers and junior designers to create projects with. However, when actually practicing art direction, it's also defending every visual choice with a narrative that also connects to a larger narrative that sometimes stems on an entire year. So in other words, challenging. And I totally knew the surface level of that. So that's why I went ahead and still, of course, every single week, create a new mood board. Fun fact, I actually create three every single Monday, but I only share one. Now, naturally, the first question you might ask is, where do I find all these photos? Not a sponsor, by the way, but it's, it's, it's Pinterest. So let me quickly walk through what I would usually do. Now, of course, the first thing is that starting search. So you can type things in like typography posters, sports posters, get real specific with like NBA or NFL or some of that sort, or rather calligraphy if you're like doing like apparel projects. The more you actually end up using the search engine, the better the results they give you right below that or on your home page so that you can actually probably never have to kind of search too much anymore. I've actually called the TikTok for creatives because you're going to definitely end up doom scrolling, but it's going to be doom scroll with like inspiration. So for me, I'll type in sports posters just like so. And if I press enter, the first thing you're going to notice is a bunch of sports images. All you have to look for is something that inspires you and gives you some kind of idea that you feel like really close like to that you also want to try. For me, this image right here is pretty cool. It's a dope composition. If I click on it just like so, we have this really cool three bar idea. And the fact that we have a, a subject in the front just makes it more interesting so you can actually hold more information, but also still highlight something in particular particular pretty dope idea. Now, what's going to happen though is below this image, it'll give us related ideas of what that theory was that you kind of clicked on the start. It also give you other ways that it was executed in, in some, some kind of context. It could be color. It could be the vibe itself. Sometimes it can also kind of take the idea of uh, what the typography or text is. But this time it's giving me kind of options again with a foreground person in the front and some kind of background agenda happening over here. This one's super dope. It takes an idea of an image in the back, just like so this really large sort of like mid ground idea to kind of really bleed into the foreground just really dope ideas so let's say you like something don't forget to click down on this little drop down here create board and name it after something that you find interesting if you found this composition interesting what would you call this i would call it background foreground don't forget to save the things you like some people say pinterest sucks because they haven't actually saved a single thing so it doesn't know what to do so it's one thing to save it bring it to your photoshop document or your figma board and just like enjoy it over there but don't forget to also press save and pin it to something please and when you guys actually do do that on your home page if you're hover over things like just for instance this one right here says text effects six this was my sixth week of looking at text effects and what pinterest said to me was like hey you might like this on your board if you do like it you just press save you're done now, let's just say, where do you go from here? What I found the most helpful is actually noting down what it is you felt or saw or focused on when you're creating that specific mood board. On my site, sesohq.com slash inspiration, I'll link it down below. I have every single mood board I've ever done. But if I were to actually pick a few, hopefully it becomes a little bit obvious on what I was possibly focusing on. Or hopefully you'll find a different value based on the actual motivation for your inspiration. So for this board, I actually felt strongly about exploring the different ways type was spread around a canvas, no matter the context. This first piece actually Explore the idea of changing the vertical height of a traditional font and also possibly adding that grunge effect to help address its stretch because it may feel too uncharacteristic in a traditional sense. However, then surrounding that type grouping with like type texture on the top and bottom to kind of set a frame where the piece under it possibly have the same concept but a different execution. To me, all of the type is actually framing an empty space. It became the celebrated part of the design by making it more interesting with this like offset grid idea. And then with this lost piece, it uses a modular grid system to align the text anywhere that's all also still balanced because the grid just assists where the type is sitting. And honestly, all these are really great examples of just how type just can sit anywhere with a purpose. This board motivated me to seek how people distort or manipulate type to kind of fit in a space where there really isn't any. And then there's this board where I wanted to search out different type layouts that just sit behind a subject. Sometimes a type sits in the middle of the frame like this yellow poster, where others fully take over with an interesting middle subject to draw focus to it, the tenant poster. Then a similar idea with a full type takeover where it of course hits nearly the top 
top and bottom, but this piece actually chooses to intertwine imagery to add more tension. Now, because of these rabbit holes, they allow me to choose where and when I can apply these designs to my art direction. It ends up allowing me to understand the different ways the artists handle their solutions per each piece. So if I ended up having a client that had their perfect vision and were pretty much set on their visual keyword, something like mysterious, vibrant, and vicious, I can go into my save boards and probably pick out these two designs as a cool jump off point where one might really assist me in the idea of my typography and tones where this other guy can assist me with my impact and boldness. So you might still ask me why? Why do I need to do this? And honestly, my answer is pretty straightforward. For those young artists who tweet out losing creativity or losing motivation, don't mix up a loss of motivation to design with losing interest in inspiring yourself. Listen to me very clearly. No art is original. So please stop putting too much pressure on designing with uninspired ideas. This practice saved me, honestly. It allowed me to no longer dwell on how people create their pieces, but help me focus on which pieces help me build my puzzle. So to that, build a mood board or use mine, sesohq.com. But with that, sesohq out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay a freaking proud of guys. Later, much love, peace. And also share your mood board, by the way. Why not? On socials. Go crazy.